Mm, mm, mm. Bruh, I'm sitting here watching C. Lai Salome. And, um, <clears throat> um, it was supposed to be, um, I called it late, man. I forgot all about it. And I didn't get in here until, like, two hours in. So, anyway, I was supposed to be watching this C. Lai Shalome, uh, versus Ben, da ben Dawid Irmahu. Uh, these freaking names, man, I swear, bro. Why can't y'all just have normal names that's easy to pronounce? Um, who is God, Lord God, and Lord? Anyway, man. Bruh. Oh, my gosh. As he was just talking about, like, the God that you hold in mind when you die and you go on into the spirit world... Like, the God that you're believing in is the God that entraps you. And, you know, like, then <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh, bro. This is so deep. This, this is this is deeper than I ever thought it could go, bro. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. But it brought up the fact, like, I, I remember thinking in my head a lot, you know. And these thoughts just, just come into mind, you know, like... What what is heaven going to really be like? You know, like, are we really just going to be bowing down saying, you know, um, I worship you and this and this and that? Like, I mean, wouldn't that get boring after a while? And like, what would be the point of that? Like, just, like, I just, I never understood that, right? So like, it was never really in my mind to like, think that heaven was that, you know, I so it was always there so I was always searching for you know what is the truth about heaven and or hell you know I always wanted to know the truth about this um so in my journey I have found that um yeah that's a deception bro uh, there's no way that the creator of all life requires us to just bow down and worship him all day long, you know? I mean, of course he adores, you know, the admiration and, and the praise from, you know, for being the creator. But he gave us a life to live. And he gets joy and happiness in us living and fulfilling our desires and our wants, as long as it's righteous, you know, as long as it's within his eternal laws and we're not breaking his eternal laws. He rejoices in us. He rejoices in us living a fulfilling life. You know, he, this is what he desired for us to live a happy, a long, fulfilling life. You know, doing all of the things that we desire to make us happy. Okay? We were created to be happy. And, um, yeah, we were, we were forced to be miserable. <laughs> you know, it was literally forced upon us. It was literally forced upon me, okay? Um, when I, since I was born, you know, it was literally for, flesh eating was forced upon me. You know, eating junk food and all of this was forced upon me, you know. I didn't know no better. I just did what, you know, I was taught. I ate what I was fed, you know. Um, I didn't know no better. So, like, I sit and ponder these things. And the reason why I love the Father so much is because He is the one that gives a choice. He's the one that gave us all the choice to choose him. We can freely choose him or we can stay bound to Satan who has basically kidnapped us and force fed us. Like he's force fed us. -ish. He's force fed us everything, bro. He ain't asked. He didn't ask if you wanted to be a cannibal and eat humans. He didn't ask you that. No, he just put it in your food. He just put it in your drinks. He just put it in your cosmetics. He just put it in all these things. He didn't ask whether you wanted to be heartless and be a part of a, such a cruel act the merciless treatment 
against the animals and slaughterhouses? He didn't ask if you really wanted to be a part of it. He didn't break it down and make it and make you really know what, what the hell goes on to these innocent creatures of the Most High that He created, gave the breath of life, and cares and loves them. Like He cares for them. He loves them. But it, Satan didn't ask you if you if you would have a problem with the way that these animals are treated, so that they can wind up dead on your plate. He didn't explain all of this to you. You're you're clueless. You got your head in the sand. You don't know no better. Ignorance is bliss, right? But yet you're sick. You're obese. Morbidly obese. I got to be morbidly obese. Freaking like 5'4", damn near 400 pounds. Can you imagine how hard it was for me to get around? I literally got to the point to where I was riding freaking Walmart, you know, that, that freaking ride alone thing around the freaking store. Yeah, I did it. When I was at my biggest point, and I had such shame, I hated myself. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know that I was supposed to love myself. I was taught all my life to hate myself. And I was never liked by anybody, really. You know, it was very few people. Like, I, I basically irk people. You know, I, like, people just, they, they, like, I just, I'm not really liked. And I've never really been liked. My whole life, people just don't like me. Even those that you would think were righteous. I'm meant to be alone, apparently, you know? Like, I don't even know how I got on this. But it's like, bruh, I've always been set apart. I've always been different. And, um, I had to grow to like my own company, you know? To love myself. And now that I love myself... People dislike me even more. Can you imagine? It's so crazy. It's so crazy. And it's like the closer I grow to the Father, and um, the, the deeper I get in the Spirit, um, the more detached people become. You know? And like... Uh, <sighs> I've come to embrace it because it's like obviously the father has me alone for a reason, you know, because I'm showing love to people. It's not like I'm pushing people away. It's like it's not like I'm doing it, you know. It is something else, bro. It's literally something else because I literally love my neighbor as I do myself. You know, I show love to people, but yet at the same time, I've pretty much got nothing but hate, you know, <laughs> it's so crazy to me, it's, it's ironic, you know, it doesn't make sense, um, but the father has me doing his channel, and, um, pfft, bruh, I keep saying I got so much to come, but Oh my gosh, you cannot even imagine, because I got this right here, um, there's something else that I am going to record um, very soon, and that is of the sealed portion, And because I don't, don't want to get into it right now, so I'm going to do that later, um, but I was reading last night and this morning, um, I think it was chapter 66 into chapter 67 or yeah yeah it was chapter 66 and then I think I read the synopsis did I read chapter 65 I don't even remember now man I don't even remember now I read a lot I kept falling asleep last night as I was trying to read and then um even this morning when I woke up because I woke up around six something 
And um, that's the first thing I wanted to do <clears throat> was get back into the sealed portion because, bruh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. And um, it just explains these things that is already in my spirit. Uh, it breaks it down in simplicity, yet I had never read this before. So, um, oh, okay, so yeah, I read chapter, <clears throat> so between last night and this morning, I read chapter 66 and 67, okay, and so now I'm on chapter 68, but I am going to do a video um, on chapter 67, starting around verse 47 or so i don't remember exactly where but i did jot down um a note and i got and that's another thing bro i got so many notes i got so many notes it's like when i'm reading the you know the father will quicken in my spirit jot this down because i want to need you to to bring this out you know so i'll jot it down because i know that i'm gonna i'm gonna be bringing it out because the father pointed it out you know, um, and it's a lot, it's a, it's a, it's a lot, oh my gosh, because when I was doing my community service, um, I took notes then, you know, I took notes then, I think only put out maybe one video, uh, worth of notes, okay, but I took a lot of notes, and so, um, that, and this is all dealing with prophecy, Okay, and it's dealing with the times that we're living in. So it is very pertinent that I get this information out because the Father has clearly given it to me. So because he's given it to me and, you know, I basically I have the mandate to bring these things out because there's a reason he gave it to me. He wouldn't have gave it to me just for me to hide it, right? And the reason he has me alone and set apart is to give me time to bring these things out. Yeah, you know, if I was surrounded by people, I couldn't just pick up my phone and just begin to talk to the world like I'm doing now. You know? Um, so I think it's, this is all the spirit, you know? <sighs> Let me see how much time this is. If it's not too long... It's only 12 minutes. Hmm. <clears throat> so, um, basically, I guess I can go ahead and do it now. Yeah, because this is important. See, man, I was just talking about this. Look, I might start a little farther up, okay? Because people need to understand this. People people get the most high twisted, bro. See, you know, they, they mix good with evil, okay? They mix evil with good. This is what they did, you know? So they, they twisted and they warped. They corrupted the word of the most high, you know? People want to say that the Bible is his word. But you're not taking into account that wicked people had their grubby hands on it. Wicked people are who compiled the so-called Holy Bible. They're the ones that, you know, deemed what they said was credible or not. Like, bro, why are you putting your trust and faith in these wicked ass people? Okay? You got to understand, you got the most high twisted with some freaking... Devil, okay? Satan said he would be like the Most High. He said he would set himself up like the Most High. You are not even questioning how and where. You're, you're not questioning nothing about his tactics and how he carried out this act. And your Bible tells you that he deceiveth the whole world, but yet you think you can't be deceived. <laughs> let me just, let me just start. Oh my gosh, because I can just go on and on and on, and this is this is quite a long chapter. I think it's like 100 verses. Alright, um... Oh, goodness sakes. <laughs> Let me start at verse 32. As a matter of fact, I should give me some water first. So give me a second.
<clears throat> so yeah, this is going to be chapter 67, um, starting at verse 32, because people got the most high twisted, and we, we about to correct that, because he is all good, he is all love, he created us to be happy, you know. He created us to live a fulfilling life. But yet we were kidnapped by Satan and all his minions. And we were forced. We were forced to participate in this satanic beast system. Oh, goodness sakes. <clears throat> okay. Um... <clears throat> And now, all of us know those things which cause us enduring happiness, and also those things which cause us a moment of happiness. Okay, let me read that again. And now, all of us know those things which cause us enduring happiness, and also those things which cause us a moment of happiness, which things are temporary, and afterwards reward us with misery, which is the absence of happiness. And these things which give unto us this temporary happiness, and then give back unto us misery thereafter, our sins against the Most High. These are those things which are wickedness and unrighteousness and against that which the Holy Prophets and the Scripture speak. But that which bringeth us continual joy, but that which bringeth us continual joy and places us in a state of happiness that is never ending, yeah, these things are the righteous things of the Most High, and have been given unto us by the Father for our happiness. Behold, the Father desireth us to be happy for ever. He does not want us to experience misery, and then at times fleeting joy that does not remain with us. For this purpose we were created by Him, even that we might have joy, even that we might have joy, and remain in a state of happiness forever. Okay, let me pause. This will keep us in a state of happiness forever. Because guess what? The Father, He, he gets happiness and joy from our happiness and joy. Okay? He does not want us to be in pain and in misery. Okay? Satan forced this upon us. Alright? Verse 36. And now, there are many who say that there does not exist upon the earth those things that bring continual happiness unto us. So some people will say, well, that don't exist. That don't exist upon the earth. You got to take the good with the bad. That's Satan mixing his evil in with the good of the Father, okay? Yeah, they say that the world is full of misery and strife and all manner of vicissitudes. I don't know what the hell that word is. And I, I, I thought about that last night as I was reading, you know, in bed. So hold on. Let me look it up now because I'm in my PC. Vicissitude. Vicissitude. What the hell? <laughs> Vicissitudes. Okay. <clears throat> 
So it's a change of circumstances or fortune, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Okay? Alteration between opposite or contrasting things. Um, but yeah, a change of circumstances or fortune, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Okay? So, yeah, they say that the world is full of misery and strife and all manner of vicissitudes and evil, and that the joys that we experience are all temporary and last only for a short time before misery once again claimeth its permanent place in our hearts. That's what Satan would have us think, right? That's what, that's what these charlatans would have us think. But it ain't true. It ain't from the Father. The Father is all love. He is all good. And He didn't give us fleeting moments of joy. Satan did that. Okay? Verse 37. And that which they say is true and is not said in hypocrisy but wisdom. And that which they say is true and is not said in hypocrisy but wisdom but of this wisdom there are few who understandeth that which they speak for behold the works of the children of men are wicked and bring forth the rewards that are associated with these wicked works even this fleeting joy of which they speak which is replaced with continual misery thereafter Okay? Do you understand that? For behold. See, and the reason why it said that, it said um, in verse 37, that which they say is true. And, it's not, and it says it's not said in hypocrisy, but wisdom. So, what they say is true, but it's because what you sow, you're going to reap. So, your temporary joy, say, let's say that you rob somebody, okay? Say you're poor. And so right now you're in misery because you're poor, all right? And you rob somebody. You rob somebody, okay? Of their of, of you know their wealth. You rob them of their wealth. Of what they have on them at the time. Say it's freaking a few thousand dollars, okay? You got away with a few thousand dollars. You're going to have temporary joy. You're going to have temporary joy. But then is only going to be short-lived because you just sowed robbing somebody. You sowed that seed of robbing someone. So it's going to be done to you. So there's only going to be a fleeting moment of joy for you. Okay? Because you sowed the seed of evil. Therefore, evil is going to come back upon you and take away that joy that you got right there temporarily, you know, but it ain't, it ain't going to last. That's, that's what Satan gives to you. That's not what the Creator would, would have given to you. If you had to just sought ye first him, the kingdom of the Most High, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added unto you. Okay? And this is coming from the oppressed point of view. This is coming from someone that's dealt with poverty their whole life. Okay? Still dealing with it. Still facing it. Okay? But yet the Father has enriched me with His Word. And I'm going with it. Okay? I'm just going to do His work. And He said He'll take care of me. Now, 37, one more time. And that which they say is true, and not said in hypocrisy, but wisdom. But of this wisdom, there are a few who understandeth that which they speak. I clearly understand. Okay, I understand why they say that it's temporary. Okay, for behold, the works of the children of men are wicked and bringeth forth the rewards that are associated with these wicked works. Even this fleeting joy of that which they speak, which is replaced with a continual misery thereafter. Because that robbery is going to come right back on you, bruh.
And do you think that this would be the case if ye obeyed the commandments of the Most High and did that which is good and righteous in his sight? Of a surety, the children of men suffer all manner of vicissitudes and sadness vicissitudes and sadness and misery among them but these things they suffer because they are wicked and not because the word of the most high is not sure in that which he has promised those who keep his commandments and is it so hard to understand that if ye are happy then ye are doing those things which are good before the Father. That is, I say, if the happiness that ye are experiencing is a continual happiness that lasteth forever. Now, I got, I got something to say on this too, because for the most part, I am in a continual happiness, okay? But at the same time, I'm still in this captivity, alright? So... For the time being, um, it's still temporary because this wicked system and wicked people impose their ways upon me, causing me to be miserable, okay? But the Father is going to deliver us up out of this captivity very soon. Okay? Because... <clears throat> verse 41 and if ye are sad and miserable then ye are doing those things which are evil and contrary to the plan of the father now not all of us are doing things that are evil and contrary to the plan of the father but like I said we're in this captivity still yet under the hand of the worst of the heathen okay and now I have been commanded by the Spirit to give unto you an example of that which ye can do to have this temporary happiness with you always. Yeah, ye already know that the commandments of the Father are all related to the great commandment which he has given unto us, which is that we love one another as we would have them love us as okay we love one another in that we love one another as ye will have them love you therefore a sin is anything that ye do to another that ye will not have him do unto you and a righteous work is anything that ye would do unto another that ye will have him and a righteous work is anything that ye would do to another that ye would have him do unto you. And if ye would do unto another what ye would want him to do unto you, and he does likewise unto you, then wherein can there exist a semblance of misery of any kind? Now, I brought a video out a while back. I don't even remember the name of it now. Um, I don't remember it. Let me see. Cause I, I never read this before, you know. Um, I did this video a while back. And this is chapter 67. I hadn't gotten this far. Okay, so it's just amazing to me to be reading these things um, in the pages of this book. And his confirmation with what I already have brung out. Okay? Like, I already brung this out. But I love this confirmation. Yep. I love the confirmation. It was something to do with love. I think it was let us love one another. I think it was let us love one another. I'm thinking it was that one. Let us love one another instead of judging one another. It has something to do with love. Like if we all kept the laws of love, then this world would not be in the state that it's in. Okay? 
this if we if we all kept the laws of love then the world would not be in the state that it's in in the least bit you know if we all kept this law okay now <clears throat> verse 46 would not then this happiness last forever and that which ye have done unto each other and are not the vicissitudes and miseries that we experience in mortality only those things that others do unto us hmm and are not the vicissitudes and miseries that we experience in mortality only those things that others do unto us as I just stated as I just mentioned about how I'm in this captivity and others force their miseries upon me their 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 wickedness upon me which causes me to be miserable like this economic beast system that this economic system that they set up upon this land forcing us to have to work for a living when the father freely gave us these things when the father freely gave us land yet they took our land and put us into captivity that's putting me in misery okay exactly what this verse is saying tiger stop it okay I'm going to read that verse 47 one more time. And are not the vicissitudes and the miseries that we experience in mortality only those things that others do unto us? For the sun continueth to shine in its fullness every day, giving light unto the world according to the laws of nature in which it has been established. Therefore, it is giving unto us and taking nothing from us. Therefore, is it capable of sinning against us? The sun doesn't sin against us. Now, some may beg to differ. Some may beg to differ. Those that were not, those, those, those that are, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not going to say it because I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings or nothing. But you, you, you know who I'm talking about. Those that can't tolerate. See, the Father would not create anybody upon the earth that can't tolerate the Son, okay? Because the Son was given for us. So those that have a problem with the Son, obviously there's something wrong with, with them, okay? There's something wrong with those that cannot tolerate the sun. And there are some pale-skinned people that can tolerate the sun, all right? There's a lot of them out there. So the ones that literally cannot tolerate the sun, like vampires, okay? You know, that's what I think of. Them that can't tolerate the sun. And you must wear your sunscreen. Okay, I'm going to get off of that subject. All right, no, I'm trying. To, I ain't. I ain't trying to put nobody down. I'm not trying to hurt nobody. Um, despite how for hundreds of years my people has been put on the bottom, and we have been portrayed as the worst of the worst. Okay, and we have been portrayed as ugly and this and this and that when we were actually created perfectly. You know, our melanin, all of this was original okay pale skin is not original I'm trying to get off the subject okay I'm trying to get off the subject all right let me go back to this I already read verse 47 again let me go ahead and read verse 48 again okay for the sun continueth to shine in its fullness every day giving light unto the world <clears throat> according to the laws of nature in which it has been established Therefore, it is giving unto us and taking nothing from us. Therefore, is it capable of sinning against us? And do any of those things which the Most High has provided for us on this earth, even the fruits and the plants that provide us with nourishment, do any of these sin against us and cause us misery? 
Well, let me pause right quick. Because I, I hear a lot of people trying to talk crap. Trying to talk crap about how you can get parasites from fruit. How you can get parasites from vegetables. That is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? Now, the only way you're going to get parasites from a fruit or 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 freaking vegetables is maybe nowadays with the way that this wicked ass government is tampering with our food okay genetically modified organisms hello all right they're probably creating some abominations okay that they're forcing upon us all right again more misery that these wicked people are forcing upon us that have been placed in captivity. And it ain't just a Negro that's in captivity. These days, it's all of humanity. It's all of creation. <sighs> Do any of those things which the Most High has provided for us on this earth, even the fruits and plants that provide us with nourishment, do any of these sin against us and cause us misery? Yet if our neighbor taketh more of the fruits and the plants than are necessary for his own nourishment, even that there is none left for another, does this not create misery and strife among us? Hold on, I'm not gonna go get my cat and lock his ass up because he's tripping. Tiger? Alright, let me go ahead and reread verse 50. Yet if our neighbor taketh more of the fruits and the plants that are necessary for his own nourishment, even that there is none left for another, does this not create misery and strife among us? And if he who has nothing to eat cometh to him who hath taken more than that which he needeth for his own nourishment, and asketh of him something to eat. And if he who has an abundance saith unto him, who hath none, I have nothing to give to you, does this not cause misery and unhappiness? Let's bring this around to our days today, okay? Why do you think? There is robberies. Why do you think that oh, this chaos that is upon the earth today is because of the greedy, okay? Everybody is miserable because we're all having a fight for scraps, you know? <sighs> Bruh. Look at the super elite. Look at the super freaking wealthy, alright? They have such abundance. But... They have 
stolen everything, okay? Look at the starving people all over the earth. Look at all the homeless people, bro. I mean, it's freaking heartbreaking to think about this, but I think about it all the time in my own in my own poverty, okay, like my own struggles, and all of this, like, isn't, it's not, I've brung out many videos before, it's not like I haven't, you know, worked a freaking job, okay, I've done that, and was still fucking poor, so, it is bullshit, bro, this system is bullshit, and it causes misery amongst the people, okay, and it has caused me great misery, my whole life, okay?